Good morning and welcome to this series of cell biology lectures. So this is the first lecture, Introduction to Cell Biology. And my name's Adil Abassi and I am a PhD graduate from the University of Strathclyde. I did my PhD in biomedical sciences, uh, specifically biochemistry. So this is the first video that I'm making just now. So the purpose of this video, just for all you, all, all, all of you, is for that if anyone is a biology student is struggling with these concepts or is like wondering about exam questions, etc. What sort of questions they'll ask in UK curriculum and other curriculums about cells and that. So as you can hear, I've got a very strong Scottish accent. So in this slide, there will be a lot of written material as well, as long as as well as me speaking, because I know there are different types of learners as well. So I'm just going to go over about the, bio cell, the simple cell biology, about what is a cell, uh, the different types of cells, etc., their features, and eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, because this is quite a common question that I faced when I was in my first year of university in my undergrad about features of uh, cells. And as you progress, if you choose to do, do a master's or even a PhD, then you'll probably be working with these specific organelles and deciphering the roles. So let's just begin. Okay, so firstly, what is a cell? So the cell is the basic structure of all living organisms. And the purpose of these cells is to provide structure for the body, take in nutrients from food, and carry out important functions. Now, a single cell is defined as a, as a complete organism, such as a bacterium or, or a yeast. But as cells grow, they can get other specialized functions as they, as they matured. And that'll be covered in my further growing lesson, uh, other lessons as I, as I move on. So cells can group together to form tissues, which in, which in turn group together to form organs, such as the heart and the brain. And Although cells are much larger than atoms, they are still very small. So currently the smallest type of cell that's known is a tiny bacteria called mycoplasmas. And these have a higher... So cells have a number of functional structures called organelles. And in this diagram here, if you can see that there are some typical cells here, like animal cells, plant cells and bacterial cells. So I can see there's stuff like sensory oils, cell membranes, bacterial, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, nucleus, nucleolus, chromosomes, Golgi complex, also known as Golgi apparatus, cytoplasm, chromosome, ribosomes, mesosomes, pili, capsules, plasma membrane, cell walls. Some of these are generic to, to all cells, but others only present in a specific type. So I'll just... So one of the organelles is a plasma membrane. So a cell is enclosed by a plasma membrane, which can form a selective barrier that allows nutrients and waste products to leave. So some products can come in and some products can come out. Proteins are too big to pass, for example. You know, um, the interior of the cell is organized into many specialized compartments or organelles, which are each surrounded by a separate membrane. So quite common to eukaryotic cells, I'll talk about in a bit, is the nucleus which contains the genetic information necessary for cell growth and re reproduction which is your dna so each cell only contains one nucleus whereas other types of organelles are present in multiple copies in the cellular contents otherwise known as a cytoplasm uh, organelles also can include mitochondria which are responsible for the energy transactions necessary for cell survival this could be stuff like your glycolysis, uh, which is involved in ATP, ATP production, adenosine triphosphate production. I'm sure some of these will come about that in future, but that's like a process where glycolysis goes to Krebs cycle, Krebs cycle goes to oxidative phosphorylation, and that results in production of ATP. So that usually takes place in the mitochondria. Then you have liposomes, which digest unwanted materials from the cells. This is usually done through mac. This is usually done as well through macrophages, but involving uh, phagocytosis and the, the isosomes also. So, in contrast with the macrophages, etc., because that's a different thing, right? The lysosomes contain uh, digestive enzymes which are involved in breaking down parts of the cell, uh, materials within the cell. These vary in size, etc., and number and uh, number and shape as well, depending on the cell type. Uh, furthermore, there are also other 
organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. So the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, these play important roles in the internal organisation of the cell by producing selected molecules and then processing, sorting and directing them to the proper lo locations. So you get two types of endoplasmic reticulum, that smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth is involved in the production of lipids and rough is involved in the production of uh, proteins and the Golgi apparatus is specifically involved in packaging and processing of complex molecules by the cell. Uh, I I'm very briefly going to touch on plant cells because I didn't have it in the figure before. So plant cells contain chloroplasts which are responsible for photosynthesis where the energy is where sunlight is used to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. So in between all these organelles within the space of this in the spike cytoplasm is the cytosol, right? So the cytosol contains an organized framework of fibrous molecules, such as the which which make the cytoskeleton, which provides its cell shape, permits organelles to move within the cell, and provides a mechanism by which a cell itself can move. So the cytosol also possesses more than ten thousand different types of molecules which are involved in cellular biosynthesis, which is basically the process of making large biomole biological molecules from small ones. So having done all that very briefly, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move into like, the specific types of questions you guys could be asked in exams and like first year, et cetera, this sort of stuff. about like, it, So say for instance, it could be an essay that differentiate between the different types of cells and what features are present, your multiple choice. I have questions like which of these is part of a prokaryotic cell which is part of these as a eukaryotic cell. So I'm going to go over this stuff, right? Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, and then talk about the features. So prokaryotic cells can be defined as unicellular organisms which lack membrane-bound structures, which is mainly a nucleus, right? They also tend to be quite small, simple in size, and have a and measure around 0.1 to 5 micrometers in diameter. Whilst they don't have membrane-bound structures, they do have distinct cellular regions. Right, um, in prokaryotic cells, instead of a nucleus, they have a region called a nucleoid, which you'll find DNA present. And these prokaryotes can be split into two domains, which is bacteria and archaea. So, in prokaryotes, molecules of proteins, DNA, and metabolites are all found together, floating with it, floating within the cytoplasm. Um, another point I want to just touch on quickly is. If, if you're ever asked name two types of prokaryotes, you mainly it's the bacteria and archaea. You know, so this could be a multiple choice question, like which of these is a prokaryotic cell, or which of these is not, which of these is not a prokaryote, which of these is not a eukaryote. That sort of question we're comparing contrasts. So that is prokaryotic cells basically, but I'm going to go a bit more into the features of the prokaryotic cells now. So I mentioned before about the point. So you have a nucleoid, which is a central region of the cell, which contains its DNA. You have ribosomes, which are also present in the other cell types, uh, for, uh, eukaryotic cells, which are responsible for protein synthesis. You have a cell wall, which is involved in providing structure and protection from the outside environment. Most bacteria have a rigid cell wall made from carbo carbohydrates and proteins called peptidoglycans. So if you're ever asked a question in a multiple choice, the cell wall of pro prokaryotic cells is made of what? You could say peptidoglycans. Uh, the cell membrane, so every prokaryote, pro prokaryotic cell has a cell membrane, also known as a plasma membrane, which separates the cell from the outside environment. They have a capsule, so some bacteria have a layer of carbohydrates which surround the cell wall from the capsule. So this helps bacterium attach to surfaces. There's also fimbri present, which is thin hair like structures which help with cellular attachment. You have pili, which are rod-shaped structures and multiple roles, including attachment and DNA transfer. You also have flagella, which are thin, tall-like structures which assist in movement. And I've written here once again, bacteria and archaea are the two types of prokaryotes, just to make that very clear, right? So that was prokaryotic cells. And then I'm going to move on to you. So I can see here of the diagram of a eukaryotic cell. So on the side, so it's got your ribosomes, your cytosol, your endoplasmic reticulum, your mitochondria, 
your nucleus. So eukaryotic cells are organisms who have a, whose cells have a nucleus and other organelles enclosed by a plasma membrane. Now compare that to prokaryotic cells which don't have a nucleus, they have a nucleoid, and they don't have organelles enclosed by a membrane, they lack membrane bound organelles. Right? So these organelles have a, are responsible for a variety of functions such as energy production and protein synthesis. As I said before earlier in the video, ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. Energy production takes place in the mitochondria via ATP. Um, the eukaryotic cells are much larger, around 10 to 100 micro, micrometers, and they're quite complex. While, so this is a very important point to note, right? While most eukaryotic cells are multicellular organisms, there are also some single cell eukaryotes. So if, it, if you want to know, if you ever want to define eukaryotic cells, it would be your animals, your plants, your fungi, algae, and protozoans. So a key point to know about fungi is, is fungi have their cell walls made of chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N, chitin. So that's another thing that could pop up in a multiple choice question. So moving on to so you have the nucleus which stores the genetic information in chromatin form. Compare that to the prokaryotic member, where it's in the form where it's in the nucleoid. You have the nucleolus where it's found. So the nucleolus is found inside of the nucleus and is part of eukaryotic cells. And this is where ribosomal RNA is produced. So later on in my other videos, I'll go about the different types of RNA, like mRNA, ribosomal RNA, tRNA, tRNA, forward to fair RNA. You have the plasma membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer which surrounds the entire cell and it encompasses the organelles within. So I'm sure a lot of you come, have come across about the fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane and the hydrophobic and hydrophilic components. Uh, you have a cytoskeleton or cell wall which pr provides structure, allows for cell movement and plays a role in cell division. So cell division is your mitosis, for example. So I've mentioned before about the ribosomes being responsible for protein synthesis. So mitochondria are the powerhouse of a cell, also known for also responsible for energy production. So that would be your ATP being formed, adenosine triphosphate, and that would happen in your free. You guys will come into this detail into this in more detail, especially studying biochemistry about your glycolysis with the different enzymes and Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. It's mainly ATP for the energy, but there are others. Uh, cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is the region of the cell between the nuclear envelope and the plasma membrane. You have a cytosol once again, also present in the nuclei, uh, in the prokaryotic cells as well as the eukaryotic. It's a gel-like substance within the cell that contains the organelles. You have the plasma epithelium, which are organelles dedicated to protein maturation and transportation. You have vesicles and vacuoles, which are membrane-bound sats involved in transportation and storage. Remember what I said about the endoplasm reticulum, you get two types, the smooth ER and the rough ER. The rough is involved in protein and the smooth ER is involved in lipid. So, moving on to the the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Now, this information is quite important in the sense that if you're ever, ever asked to write an essay question, differentiate between the different cell types or differentiate between the structure or describe the difference between the structure of a prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. These sort of tables are perfect about the differences. Obviously you can mention the organelles in that which I mentioned, but I should see the table here as a summary. The nucleus is absent in a pro prokaryotic cell but present in a eukaryotic. In a prokaryotic member they have the nucleoid. They don't have membrane bound organelles in the prokaryotic but they're present in the eukaryotic. The cell structure of a prokaryotic is unicellular, but in the eukaryotic it's mostly multicellular, but some can be unicellular. A prokaryotic cell is much smaller, it was not, zero, not 0.1 to 5 micrometers, um, micrometers, and a eukaryotic cell is much, much larger at 10 to 100 micrometers. The structure of a prokaryotic cell is simple, whereas a eukaryotic cell is more complex. The DNA form of a prokaryotic cell is circular, where a eukaryotic cell is linear. So, just thinking about circular DNA, you want to take note of that because in the future, as you progress along your degrees, you'll come across stuff called plasmids. 
and I'll make a video on that as well soon as well. Examples of prokaryotic cells is bacteria and archaea, and examples of eukaryotic cells is animal, plants, fungi, and protists. So that's the end of our video today, guys. Uh, happy to uh, get through that all with you. If there's any questions or anything that you leave, uh, or even any mistakes I may have made, I have not just uh, uh, watched the video and up stuff, you know, so it's very random at the start, you know, so I'm going to be shutting it off, you know. I feel really educated that way, so just uh, get out and finish it. But yeah, get out and finish it and uh, forget all of you, but you know, that, that's kind of a bit famous, but you know, that's what I do, forget all of it, so please do forgive me. Um, if there's any questions about essay questions or like different type of questions to be asked and how to improve your answer, because universities and other universities do look at like the difference between an A grade and a B grade is like how much depth you'd want to, you know. So I have to I have to like stress that this stuff is like the minimum with some more information. But if you want to get like top top grades, I would recommend reading some journals and also reading uh, book more books, etc. Uh, and getting right into the journals basically and seeing referencing that and stuff as well, you know, that can really improve your mark. Like people get impressed by that. But uh, thank you very much for your, thank you very much for viewing this video. If you got towards the end, and uh, I hope to, I hope you see, I hope to see you all. I hope you'll see me in my next video. Thank you. Bye bye.